Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. If you're joining us for the first time, or if you've been with us for a while, we invite you to sign in to let us know that you are worshiping with us. And then we ask if you have a prayer request for yourself or for someone else, or even for the world or our community, we ask that you click the link and leave your prayer request so that we can pray with you and for you. Finally, this is week three of our sermon series, I've Been Meaning to Ask. And this week's focus question is, what do you need? So I invite you all to think about what you need individually, whether that's spiritually, physically, or mentally, and then allow the message, the music, and even the liturgy to speak, the, speak to those needs on today. Let's pray together. God of long winters and longer summers, in the words of Paul, do your best to come to us quickly. Come to us with loud praise and joy, or appear to us in a still, small voice. Come to us through friends, or come to us through strangers. Come to us in this text and in this hour of worship, and come to us quickly if you can. We are seeking you. We are always seeking you with grateful hearts, cracked open by your love. We pray. Amen. And amen. Good morning, Westminster friends. It's Miss Sally here for our children's time. I want to invite the children of all ages to join me. Have you ever had a bad day? I'm sure all of us have had bad days. Have you ever had a truly awful day? I bet you've had those too. I want to read part of a book to you this morning about a boy who has a bad day, a horrible day, a terrible day. Can you guess what the book is? Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth and now there's gum in my hair and when I got out of bed this morning I tripped on the skateboard and by mistake I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box, but in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. Alexander was right about it being a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. So many bad things happened to him, and he felt like no one even cared. He was smushed in the back seat of the car on the way to school. His mom forgot to pack a dessert in his lunch. He fell down and got muddy and got in a fight with his brother. He even had to eat lima beans for dinner. But in the end, his mom reassures him that some days are like that, even in Australia. Now I want to tell you about someone else in the Bible named Job who had it even worse than Alexander. Job was a good man and he had a good life. But his faith in God was tested when Satan made some really awful things happen to him. Job lost everything. His farm animals died. His servants died. Even his children were killed in a terrible storm. And he had painful sores all over his body. But here's the amazing part. Even though all of those horrible things happened, Job never stopped trusting God. He never lost faith. 
He kept praying to God and talking to God. He did ask him, why are all these horrible things happening to me? But he didn't lose faith, and God never left his side. Eventually, God turned things around for Job. He gave him back his farm animals. He e healed his skin. He even blessed him with more children. You know, like Alexander and like Job, all of us have terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Sometimes our worries are no bigger than having to eat lima beans for supper. Sometimes they might be big, like losing someone we love or being sick. And I know sometimes it can feel like nobody cares or wants to listen to your complaints and your worries. But I'm here to tell you that there is someone who is always ready to listen. Someone who always cares about how we're feeling you might be thinking, yeah, that's my mom, or that's my grandpa, or that's my best friend. And of course, we all need people like that, that we can talk with when we're feeling bad or when we're worried. But I'm talking about God. You can always bring your troubles to God and know that God hears you no matter where you are. God cares about you, and he sees what happens to you, even in Australia. And you know, if you see someone else hurting, you can bless them by showing them kindness and letting them know that you see what they're going through and that you care. God is pleased when we take time to show someone we love them and when we pray for them on their very bad days. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for always being with us always caring about us and listening to us. Help us to see that we're not alone. Help us to show others that they are not alone. On good days and on bad days, you are our God and we are your children. Thank you, dear God. Amen. Hope everybody has a great week. to ask questions for curiosity, connection, and courage. And we turn this morning to the question, what do you need? Uh, when Elaine, my wife, asked me that question, it usually means she's going to the grocery store and she wants to know if I have anything to add to her list. And my answer is almost always the same. I need Munster cheese and saltine crackers in fresh packs. I need grapes, I need apples, and I need chocolate animal crackers. That's kind of my standard list right now. But about two uh, and a half weeks ago, my needs changed fairly dramatically. I had an issue with my knee, and so I now needed Elaine to help me get from my chair to my car. I needed her to drive me to the doctor and find a wheelchair for me to take me up. I needed her to sit uh, for five hours waiting for me to be done with my surgery. All of us have needs. And those needs change. We all have different needs. But we all need God. And we all need each other. Because it's not good for us to be alone. We are looking at two scripture readings this morning. One is about friends giving us help. And the other is about how we can ask for help from others. So I invite you, whether you are here in the sanctuary, whether you're joining us online, to listen to these two scripture lessons, thinking about this question, what do you need? First comes from the book of Job, the second chapter, verses 11, to 11 through 13. That when Job's three friends heard all these troubles that had come upon Job, each one of them set out from his home. Eliphaz the Terminite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite. They met together to go and comfort and console Job. When they saw Job from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices, they wept aloud, they tore their robes, they threw dust in the air upon their heads. And they sat with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to Job. For they saw that his suffering was very great. And then from 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 through 18, Paul is writing to his young friend Timothy. 
Paul says, do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with the present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Cratians has, joined to, has gone to Galatia, Titus to De, De, uh, Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I've sent Tychius to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and the books and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You must also beware of him, for he's strongly opposed to our message. At my first offense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed to all the Gentiles, that all the Gentiles might hear it. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To God be the glory forever. Amen. May God bless this reading. May God bless this hearing of this God's word. Uh, Tracy Lawrence has a song called You Find Out Who Your Friends Are. First verse of that song says, run your car off the side of the road, get stuck in a ditch, Way out in the middle of nowhere, get yourself in a bind, lose the shirt off your back, need a floor, need a couch, need a bus fare. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the cream is going to rise. This is what you really did not know. This is where the truth doesn't lie. You find out who your friends are. Somebody's going to drop everything, run out and crank up their car, hit the gas, get there fast. Never stop to think what's in it for me, or it's way too far. They just show up with their big old heart. You find out who your friends are. Uh, in that first reading, Job finds out who his friends are. They hear about his trouble, and they set out from their homes. They come together to comfort and console him. They look, and they see his troubles and so they begin to wail and tear their robes and throw up dirt in the air on their heads. And then they sit with Job for seven days and seven nights. And no one says a word to him because they see how great his suffering is. Brene Brown has a wonderful little video that is the difference between sympathy and empathy. Uh, she says that, that empathy builds connection, but sympathy drives disconnection. She says it's like when someone is in a deep hole and they say it's dark in here. This is bad. And so she says empathy means climbing down into the hole and sitting with them in that darkness and saying you are not alone. Sympathy is looking down into the hole and saying, ooh, it looks bad down there. Do you want a sandwich? Sympathy sees the pain, but is not, willing to, 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 is not willing to share in that pain. It's not willing to understand the pain before it tries to fix it. But empathy is the opposite of that. Empathy means sharing the pain first, not trying to explain it, not trying to fix it, certainly not judging it, but simply being with someone in their pain. And then the help comes from understanding, and it comes from trust. Job's friends show us what empathy looks like, and this is often the greatest gift we can give someone when they are in trouble, when they are in pain. Instead of trying to fix their pain, we simply be with them in their pain to share that pain and to make sure they know that they are not alone. This is also what I think we see in Jesus Christ, in, in Jesus' birth, in Jesus' life, in Jesus' death, in Jesus' ministry. We see that God does not stay distant. God comes to be with us. God shares our pain, understands our pain, takes that pain upon himself. But then only through that 
uh, Christ is able to redeem that pain, to, to make it somehow a part of this journey towards salvation through that power of the resurrection. And then Jesus invites his followers, Jesus invites us to be the body of Christ, to show and to represent God's love. We'll never do this perfectly, but we can make a difference. I love the motto of our Stephen ministry, which says, we care, God cures. But I think when we care, when we are with people, then God often uses us as a part of the solution. All of us sometimes get stuck in a ditch in the middle of nowhere. We get in a bind. We lose the shirt off our back. And so when we see someone else in that situation, God calls us to show up with empathy and to be a friend. In that second reading from, from 2 Timothy, we see how important it is to also be willing to ask for help and to be specific about that. Paul doesn't hesitate to share with Timothy all the hurts that he has experienced, all the challenges he experiences, and then to ask for help. Paul says he needs help because Demas has betrayed him. And that is always a painful experience when someone you have trusted, someone you thought was a friend, has betrayed you. He also says that, that Christians and Titus and Antichius were all needed in other places. But that leaves him alone with only Luke to help him. So Paul tells Timothy exactly what he needs. Go and get Mark and bring him because he's so useful to me in my ministry. I'm also struck by, by the way Paul gives very little things that he asks for. He, he tells Timothy, get that cloak that I left in Troas and get the books and get especially the parchments. Sometimes those little things are what we need. Could you watch my child? Yes, if you could bring a meal, that would be great. Could you take me to the doctor so my wife doesn't have to take off work again? Paul asks Timothy for what he needs, but he also turns to God. He says that Alexander the coppersmith has done him great harm, but he doesn't look for, for, for vengeance or revenge. Instead, he just trusts that God will take care of this. For his first trial, nobody showed up. All his friends deserted him. And yet Paul says that God was with me. God gave me strength. God delivered me from that trial. We all have needs. And our needs are all different. But we all need God. And we need each other. Because it's not good for us to be alone. I want to be specific this morning and say a word first to our children and to our young people. Uh, I know that for many of you, it's been a really hard 18 months and, and counting. Uh, trying to go to school last year, uh, online didn't work very well. Now we're online, but still masked. Uh, it's been harder to see your friends than it used to be. And on top of that, whether you're a, a child or a young person, it's just a difficult time of life because you're becoming more and more independent, more and more your own person. You, you're beginning to, to be less dependent on your parents, and, and friends are more and more important. But sometimes friends leave us. Sometimes friends hurt us. And on top of all that, there's social media, and there are good things about social media. It can bring us together. But social media can also be a little bit addictive. And sometimes it just makes you feel like everybody else's life is better than yours is. And so it th makes things worse instead of better. And so sometimes even if you're a child or a young person, you may feel like you're in this dark hole. And it's kind of bad and scary. Uh, and I would just encourage you, as Lucy did, that, that in that time, it's important to tell someone what you're experiencing. And important to ask for help even if you don't know what you need. Uh, as Lucy said, it might be your parent, you might tell somebody else's parent, you might tell a coach or a mentor or a friend that you trust. 
I do hope that you will always know you can talk to Lucy, who is here. You can talk to Harrison, who is here. You can talk to Sally, our assistant the director for youth ministry. You can talk to me if that's not too scary. You can talk to, to Jasmine. You can talk to Butch. You can talk to Cindy. You can talk to Pastor Sam. But it's important to speak out and share, here's what I'm feeling. And I think I need some help. And actually, I'd say the same thing to, to you all as adults. These last 18 months have been hard for all of us. Work has been hard. Uh, caring for children has been hard. Caring for our parents has been hard. Caring for our grandchildren is a joy, but sometimes that's hard too. And sometimes it's all of the above. Many of us are struggling with mental health issue or, or physical health issues. It might be our own health that might be somebody that we love and we care about health. Uh, some of us have not been able to see friends and family, and, and that's been hard. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we have lost loved ones and not been able to say goodbye the way we wanted to, and that has been hard as well. I know some of you may have been hurt even by the church. You may feel like the church has not reached out to you in the way you hoped it would during this time. I know some are hurt because they feel like there's been too much talk about politics in the church. And others because they feel like there has not been enough talk about politics in the church. Uh, Paul is willing to share his hurts, to share where he needs help with Timothy. And I think that's what we need to do as well, to be honest about where it hurts and to be honest when we need for help. That might mean telling a friend, it might mean telling a spouse, it might mean telling one of us, it might mean asking for a Stephen minister who will simply be with you in that journey to listen and to share that pain. And then tell God too, trusting that God will give you strength and God will deliver you from that trial. All of us have needs and all our needs are different. But each of us needs God, and each of us needs each other. And the good news is that God is always there, and there is someone who will be there for you too. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sharing the affirmation of faith. Stand with me. We believe in relationships. In showing up for one another. We believe in listening with grace, learning with curiosity, and apologizing with sincerity. We believe in trying our best and offering grace when our best is not enough. So we love today and we strive to love even more tomorrow. Let it be so. Amen. You may be seated.
When we love someone in need, it is easy to give. We show up with casseroles and prayer shawls. We send cards and make phone calls. We babysit the kids and drop off flowers. We don't think twice about it because when we love someone in need, it is easy to give. In worship, when we give to the offering, what we are also declaring is that not just those we love, are worthy of our gifts, but God is worthy of our gifts. And strangers whom we have never met are worthy of our gifts. In worship, when we give to the offering, we are declaring that all of creation deserves love and care, which is a radical notion in this hurting world. So today is a way of practice being in relationship and drawing closer to one another. I invite you to give to the mission and ministry of this church. For when we love, it is easy to give. I want to share with you some important things that are happening in the coming weeks here at Westminster. Next Sunday, October 3rd, we hope you will join us as we celebrate World Communion Sunday by participating in our culturally appropriate food collection for Afghan refugees. Our local mission partners will distribute our donations to the Afghan families as they arrive in the triad. Check out this past week's e-news or our website for suggested food items, and those items can be placed in the wooden bins at the back of the church. On Saturday, October the 9th, beginning at 12 noon, we will observe a 24-hour prayer vigil that will culminate with our Sunday morning worship service and faith formation hours as we consider the question, where do we go from here? You're invited to sign up on the Westminster website for a 30-minute period of prayer as we try to imagine what God is calling us to do as followers of Christ. On Sunday, October the 10th, following the morning worship services, we will have congregational meetings to hear a report from the nominating committee to vote on a slate of elders or nominees for the elder class of 2024 and for nominees for the class of 2022, the nominating committee. On Sunday, October the 24th, everyone is invited to worship at the farm for one worship service at 11 o'clock that morning as we kick off this season's stewardship campaign with worship, fellowship, and a catered lunch. We will gather at the Buchanan Farm on Highway 150 where we enjoyed a spring farm fest back in May. We hope you all make plans to join us for this wonderful occasion. As we come to this time of prayer today, I would share with you that we are extending prayers to Vicki Dawson and her family in the death of her mother this past week. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. God of the here and now, oh my, how we need you. This world seems to turn upside down all the time. Our center of gravity fills off. In moments like these, we are particularly grateful for the care you offer and the stability of friends. So today we say a prayer of thanks for the people in our life who take time to ask, what do you need? For the friend in the pew who texts us when we're not there. For parents and children who celebrate the good in life. For teachers who pay attention. For mentors and coaches who offer support and encouragement for note writers who offer a blessing with kind words. Gracious God, help us to be those people for others. Give us the eyes to see and ears to hear when our neighbors are in need and the wisdom to ask, what do you need? Stop our assumptions cold in their tracks and instead carve out space in us to listen. Gather us in and hold us close. Help us not be afraid to speak what it is we need and ask for help. In recent weeks, we have listened as hurts and needs have been shared. 
loneliness and isolation, balancing work, school schedules, and childcare, social and political division, economic hardship, loss of family members and friends, health concerns, and more. Be with us in our waiting and our praying. Be with us in our relationships that we might be blessed with friends who support us and that we might be the friends who can reach out and help and bless others. God of grace, be the light that guides us. God of peace, be the strength that carries us. God of love, be the pot and tie that binds us. God of compassion, be the presence that holds us. Bring us healing, bring us wholeness, bring us together. With deep humility and gratitude, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, trusting that you are not alone, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold fast to that which is good, return to no person evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help those who are suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God's Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of God our Father, the love of His Son Jesus Christ, and the power of God's Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.